Hey everybody, Tom Barnish, Chicago scene in the Belmont Cragen neighborhood. You can't do a Chicago story without the Blues Brothers, right? Or even Marshall Fields. That right there is a museum within a museum. That's the Chicago Manufacturing Museum, the history of it all. And I'm inside the Claremont Collection, started by a private collector years ago, now open to the public. I'm gonna to talk to Bobby, explain how this whole thing started. It's a really great story about a gentleman that fought in World War II, started his own business, and allowed him the luxuries of buying all these wonderful cars. As you can see, some of the highlights I'm walking past now. But Bobby will have the full story. It truly is a Chicago scene. So let's go ahead and say hi. All right, so I'm inside one of the main halls here at the Claremont Collection, a true hidden gem here in the Belmont Cragen neighborhood. And I'm here with Bobby. How are you, sir? How are you doing today, Tom? I'm doing well. I've, I'm mad at myself. I never knew this was here. This place is incredible, and it's a true hidden gem right here in the Belmont Cragen neighborhood with over like 300 classic vintage cars. Yes, it's, it's a fantastic collection. It previously was a private collection by a successful businessman and World War II veteran, Larry Claremont. Uh, Larry's uh, business, Imperial Realty, uh, afforded him the, uh, the ability to put together such a fine collection. So we are at 3117 North Knox in Belmont Cragen and we have 300 cars on display in a museum. And not only do you have cars, but you have cars of, of iconic value, including like the Batmobile, the one from the movie, and also the TV show, the Munster Mobile, among a bunch of other things, you know, pace cars from Smoking the Bandit. Like there's all this stuff. And then there's a Woody tucked behind you back there that yes. I've never seen in real person, up life in real person. It's crazy. Yeah, so the, the vehicles here represent anything from the period of 1900 all the way to, to modern cars. So we actually have a Tesla Roadster upstairs. The cars are the stars of the museum, but as you can see, if you pan around, there's so much memorabilia, neon lights. Now, now we're replacing with LED as well. <laughs> but the cars tell stories, and uh, the museum is a hub for storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, you can talk about the era in which the car was built in. You could talk about the person that designed the car, or you could talk about the person that owned it, or its final resting place. Right. So the, the conversations here are, are, are wide and uh, genuine. You have like this uh, mural on the wall from, like you were saying before, the, the years that they have. So you have 1900, 1910, 1920, this all the way down the line here that kind of explains the history of what was going on in the world and also uh, as far as cars too. Yeah, the, the decades poster, it's a great collage of pictures. You see the car that was produced for example, 1900, and then you see a collage of photos of what was going on in the world around that time period. So as you progress, you could see 1910, there's the uh, introduction of Uncle Sam with the I want, I want you, or the, you know, it's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah. a great, great representation of uh, how cars have paralleled modern history. They have a role in, in any event that you can name, you know, anything from, sadly, the assassination of JFK, right? There's a car that's talked about or to a particular vehicle that was used, uh, you know, domestically that uh, got people from wor work to uh, their homes. Right. And speaking of work, I saw a police car or police truck this vintage beautiful looking right. automobile and old school and it was a chicago one and then there was a post office one sure. and then the day uh the daily news or the chicago yes. daily life i can't remember the name of it right now but it was an old newspaper truck that was just gorgeous beautiful wooden chevy yes the simplicity of the industry vehicles back then you know they represented truthfully it uh a purpose and uh hel helping someone do their job whether it was a delivery person a repairman or again the police the the uh police truck that you're referring to what's really cool about it is the 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 area where the prisoners would supposedly sit it's it's it doesn't even look like you could put a german shepherd back there so <laughs> apparently we are getting a little bit bigger and taller and stronger than than our, our ancestors yeah walking through that spot of the the utility or repairman era where you have all the like these gasoline company vehicles or yeah. oil and whatnot sure. for the radiators and the way that the furnaces were back then in the city it really is a walking museum outside of cars about what those cars represented about the era kind of like what you were saying before it, it, it is it, it speaks of the industry and, and on that note chicago itself was a hub for so many things, anything from the stockyards, to the steel mills, uh, to manufacturing, you know, a, a lot was done in the city. And uh, we actually have a smaller exhibit within our own larger space called the Made in Chicago Museum. 
and that kicked off last week and we have about 400 items that were made or manufactured in Chicago prior to 1970. So again, the museum itself, you don't have to be a car person to enjoy the experience because there's all aspects of, of life that connect to these cars, that connect to the Made in Chicago Museum. Mm -hmm. But it is a great place to get educated or, or just to take a peek into yesteryear. Including that World War II plane that is not an American plane, but it's up there for a reason. And I think it's a really cool story. I think you should share that by from the owner sure. himself. Our founder, Larry Claremont, uh, was a World War II veteran who was inspired to join the military when he was walking to Wrigley Field in uh, December 7th, 1941. Oh, really? And the bombing of Pearl Harbor happened. So as a teenager, uh, Larry was inspired and, and joined the military, spent a short time in the Navy, and then thereafter uh, was, was a member of the Marines and became a lieutenant, received a uh, Bronze Star and a Purple Heart. So his, his acumen coming back from World War II let him uh, start uh, Imperial Cleaners, and that was back in the late 50s, uh, right around 1960, he sold. 150 locations and got involved in real estate and today his his family's company is Imperial Realty and uh, again that uh, afforded him the ability <laughs> to share all of this with us so we are a not-for-profit we're a 501c3 we aim to be educational we aim to be entertaining and uh, we aim to preserve uh, parts of our past and celebrate the same right and you guys do that wonderfully here the way that the entire space is set up including the back room there where you have the batmobile and you have the old 59 cadillac limo that looks like the uh car from the ghostbusters i'm yeah. sure people might recognize it i think it's the same car just obviously different color and whatnot and so, so that that cadillac is uh you know in every car tells a story uh -huh. so there's a hotel in in colorado called the broadmoor hotel it's it's still in existence it's a fairly luxurious hotel those were custom Cadillacs that have a glass paneled roof that allowed for people to be picked up at the airport. And while they were being uh, jettisoned or cart carted <laughs> over to the uh, hotel, they would take in the scenic views of Colorado. And so that is a 12 passenger Cadillac and it's a, uh, it's quite popular in Chicago. Whenever we take it to a car show, all the I families bet. want to take a picture and envision themselves, you know, with grandma and grandpa and, you know, all the, all the siblings sitting in the same car. Right. And there's another car, part of another exhibit of the drive-in where it's like this convertible with a hard top. Couldn't really make it out when I was walking by, but it goes, speaks to the, the little setup that you have there sure. of the the drive-in and also the hot dugs area down there paying homage to the city's past for sure so there there is a lot of theme going on yeah. here uh, though a few of the, the the displays you just had mentioned so there there is actual memorabilia from hot dugs mm -hmm. one of the supporters of the museum in the past was affiliated with the uh, owner from hot dugs and those items ended up here on uh permanent loan, let's call it. <laughs> and uh, there is a mock-up of the Marshall Fields building. And uh, again, we are moving forward with adding more and more Chicago history and uh, celebrating our own heritage. This uh, facility here was hall printing back in the day. So a lot of people that come here now uh, to see the cars reminisce and say, oh my God, my uncle used to work at hall printing. I remember this place. But you do need an industrial type of a building to have multiple floors of uh, collectible cars yeah we even talked that there's a second floor and there's another uh, little space here with all the hot rods yes. and then the second floor has some amazing model t fords and things from what 1919 to 1900 yeah there. right around the turn of the century 1900 so your model a's your model t's uh, again very rudimentary uh, vehicles but but they serve the function there's even a 1916 detroit electric vehicle here so that's way ahead of their time way ahead of their time you know and the the fossil fuel industry was a little bit more convenient at that time sure. and that's the way it developed but uh here we come full circle with people talking about electric vehicles absolutely and speaking of electric you have a car here with light up tires we do. that's incredible and that was something from what the 60s that somebody developed and it was a prototype and you worked with goodyear to make it all happen for today we did so the famed car customizer george barris who's known for creating the uh, uh, Batmobile, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies uh, mobile, just all these different uh, Hollywood movie cars. Uh, George himself was using that 1953 Lincoln Capri as a daily driver, mm -hmm. and it was fairly brand new, and he was in a car accident, and that's what uh, caused for the Golden Sahara to be created. So the top of it was, was damaged, it turned it into a convertible, 
and uh, made this fantastic car and then one of his associates ended up with the car and added even more items brought in innovation so today we sit here and look at our cars and we talk about bluetooth and we, gps systems and all these things that we bring into our car you know our, our even our coffee in the morning it's our mini mobile office mm -hmm. well back then imagine 19 you know 58 59 this car is touring the united states with tires that actually can change colors and light up uh, with way with, ahead of its time yeah way ahead of its time with a mock-up telephone in there and they're experimenting with uh, radar you know, to today's Teslas, they don't quite use radar, but they, they use a... Uh, well, more born from that technology. Correct, correct. The ideas were there. Yeah, that's incredible. That's all here for people who want to come by. What's the best way they can go about finding more information from you guys? Simply Google Claremont Collections, Claremont with a K, Collections with a K. Uh, we, we have our website, we have our Facebook profiles, our Instagram. You can get some eye candy there. We are open Thursday through Sunday. We are at 3117 North Knox. We have a big parking lots yep. free outside. parking it's free parking so for the chicago people that's that's half the battle it is but uh a lot of people don't know about us because we were a private collection and ultimately uh open to the public uh during covid so you know who, who really wants to open right. during during covid so now we're going to move forward and attend the local car shows get some kids here on field trips uh, Mecham Auctions is a uh, fellow sponsor for our educational programs. They, they've done a dollar for a dollar. So we're gonna have a local race program that comes out of the museum, K1 Race Cars. And uh, again, try to get as many kids in here as we can this fall, uh, yeah. going into winter and the spring. And, and teaching them their path, our past, so they know it going forward, which I think is a very important lesson for all of us. It, it, it really is true. There's some, there, there's some simplicities about some of the cars, the older cars, but there's some really fascinating aspects that, that, that have bridged that gap. A hundred years later, we're talking about the same feature on a car. Absolutely. Bobby, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Tom. Absolutely. And that is the Chicago scene here in the Belmont Craig and neighborhood, T-B-A-R-N-A-S at WGNTV.com. If you have suggestion for the Chicago scene, that's t Barnes at WGNTV.com. Check that out. That's the grand entrance into the whole space. I'll see you guys later.